In this film, you will learn how Tony uses spiral dynamics, the system developed by Claire Graves, to help people to identify where they are living in relation to their social context. There are different levels of existence that are color-coded. Beige is survival, instinctive. Purple is family, kinship, clan. Red is power, egocentric. Blue is truth, purposeful rules. Orange is strive, build, strategize. Green is human bond, relativistic. Yellow is flow, systemic. Turquoise is global view, holistic. People tend to be at one of these levels at their core, but they can also fluctuate between levels depending on their circumstances. How many of you had a breakthrough realizing the other person you're dealing with is not the only problem? <laughs> How many found your level of consciousness might be getting in the way of resolution? Let me see your hands. So who has an insight or a breakthrough or a lack of one? <laughs> Let's start with a breakthrough version, perhaps. Who's got one? Yes, ma'am, over here. Give her a hand. No, an Aussie hand! What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Trish from Darwin. Give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Trish, tell us what insight. Tell us first, what's your center of gravity normally? <sighs> I, I normally live in blue. I try and think and feel in green, but I don't. But you don't. So what she says is I come back to judgment, I don't mean to. How many follow this? Right? I don't want to, but it's so conditioned in me, it's a habit. Is consciousness a habit, yes or no? Sure as hell is. And consciousness is one of the most potent habits of all because it's affecting all your relationships, all that you experience in this life. So as important as the six needs are, this is right beside it, okay? And they, by the way, they affect each other. Because if somebody's in blue, which need structure are they after, quick? Certainty and significance by way of a holier than thou set of rules, right? So there's gonna be a lot of judgment in there. Not meaning to be, because what's really beautiful about blue is it holds a really high standard. How many follow this, right? So the, the truth is, which color is the best color? All of them are. You know, if there was a fire in here, you'll see me, I'll, I'll use red, right? And my friendships, I wanna be in green. When I was doing business, I was always green, and then I was getting eaten alive by the sharks. I had to learn how to be able to step in and out, which is why yellow becomes so valuable to use them all. So blue right now, tell me, where do you go under stress? Depends who I'm dealing with. Okay, that makes sense. So if it's somebody you're superior to, where do you go under stress? Red. Red. If you're inferior to them, where do you go under stress? Depends who it is. If it's my boss, I tend to go to beige and check out. Yeah, or purple maybe, right? Purple. Beige would be really checking out. <laughs> Okay, tell us who's somebody, give me one in your personal or professional life, who's somebody you have conflicts with in one of those two areas? My boss. Your boss, okay, good. And then tell me, what's your boss's center of gravity when you're not around? The one under green. You can look at that if you want. Orange. Orange, okay. Orange, very nice. <laughs> and where do they drop down to when they're dealing with you under stress? Red. Red. And where do you drop down to when you're dealing with your boss under stress? I try to come at it from green to give him this understanding of how that impacts our staff and our 13 years of working hard and he just wants it implemented. That's right. So, so she tries to meet him where he's not. That's a really good formula for success. So tell me, how does that affect your relationship with him? Tell us what happens. He shuts me down, I walk away. He shuts you down. And what do you do? Walk away. Walk away, but what do you do after you walk away? Besides so spitting his soup. <laughs> now look at that, did you see your face? What do you do? I implement it. No, but what do you do inside? I... You what? 
I die inside. You die inside. Okay, well, then where do they bury the body? Pardon? Where do they bury the body? <laughs> so what she really does is drops down in the surface to green, but she really goes down to what? Quick. Purple. Raise your hand if you follow. Purple. She's not going to beige. Beige is just stimulus response. She goes down to purple, total fear. And the conflict she has, you can see her, she hurts herself very deeply, but she goes into crying and sad and hurt. This guy's just orange. Why would you cry? It's not about you. He's just trying to get the job done. And if you can understand that, you can have compassion and she could actually influence him. But she's trying to influence him by being green and it's not going to influence him any more than the green here did or the red here did. How many follow this? That's why he played the game. You can see how worthless it is to try and talk to somebody in your color. The only way you're going to reach them is enter their color and then start to bridge, right? The red only respects strength. But if you give too much of it, they'll fight. But if you give enough of it, they go, now they have to listen to you. Patricia's boss, being orange, just wants to get the job done. Patricia needs to stop trying to change him into blue. But the biggest thing is I hate to see you in pain, my dear, because this is ridiculous. You're, you've got this deep emotional pain over nothing. It's like you're falling apart over nothing. What's the meaning you give it that makes you cry? There's a meaning. Remember, emotion is created by meaning. Meaning is created by the way we use our body, right? The way in which we focus and the language we use. So let's find out what language he's anchoring it with. What's the meaning you give that makes you cry at the end of that after he tells you to go implement, which is his job to do? Correct? Yes or no? Yes. If he sits around in a whole green thing, let's circle this, let's make it all feel good, some of that won't get done. Now, I'm not defending him because his style probably isn't really nice, but that's part of what he's supposed to do. And your job, if you're a leader, is not to cry or get angry. Your job is to say, how do I, what's a leader? Someone who can influence the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the behaviors of another human being. You can't do that when you take it personal. And you're taking it personally so you have no power. It has nothing to do with your boss. Raise your hand if you follow this, everybody. Our job is not to judge people, but to understand and appreciate them and then to figure out how to meet their what? needs. That's what influence is. And if we can meet their needs, then we're being generous in our being. And if we keep meeting their needs, they'll probably help us meet ours. Not always. Some people will only meet their own needs because they're truly selfish in their current level of development. But at least you can influence. So tell me, just so I know, because I'm not making you wrong. I hope you feel me. I just don't want to see you in pain like this. I hate to see someone feel that over something so little. Like all it takes is him to have a different point of view and want you to implement and you break down into purple. That's, that's not a happy life. And then when you get into purple, what do you do to try to make yourself feel good before you tell me the meaning? When you get into purple and you're that sad place, tell me what you do to try to get out of that sad place. I go and work with my team and gather them around me and protect them. Protect them, yes. And by the way, which teaches them they need protection from their boss, which is not fair or true. It's your need for protection that you're bringing back to them. You're making your team weaker so you get your cubs around you and you feel better. You get connection from them. You go to green with your team, but you're not growing as a result. Can you see that? So in order for you to grow, you can't run to purple and then run to green. And by the way, they're not that far off, are they? They're similar in ways. This one is more fear-driven, right? But then what that does, it makes it, I'm better than the boss. I'm holier than now. She doesn't say that, but what she's really doing is, he's not just, he's not fair, but I am, because she won't take on some of those conflicts. And he will. Because I want to follow the rules. Because you want to follow the rules. So she'll drop back into the blue. All right? How many follow this? Right? But that's not make, is that making her people better? If she's the leader, is she making her team better? Yes or no? Come on, guys, give me an answer. Either way, I don't care. Yes or no? No. Is it making her better? No. What it's making is she now has a story about her boss and she no longer knows her boss. She only knows the story about her boss. Because she's going to see everything through the filter if he's unreasonable. Not saying I'm weak in some areas. And maybe he sees things that I see things differently, but these are some important areas that still got to be handled. And so then she will unconsciously without meaning to, 
create that story about her boss, which will make the organization weaker. She will be undermining him, even though she doesn't call it that, because she doesn't think she'd do that. She just thinks because it's not right. She'll go to her blue principle. But her principles are based on what she thinks in the moment because she wants to meet her needs. And her need is everybody to feel good and happy right now. Tony points out how Patricia weakens her team by protecting them and how she has created a story about her boss instead of understanding him. If you just want everybody happy all the time, then you're you're living in your green, you're never going to have a quality life. Except those moments when you surround yourself with a bunch of other greenies and you all convince yourself this is a great life. But what you really need is all the dimensions. Who's with me here? Say I. And unless you can shift between all the dimensions, you're going to have a lot of pain. So the question is, what's the meaning, Patricia, that you give it when your boss doesn't agree with you like that? What's the meaning you used to give it that makes you cry? It's a pretty big, pretty big drop. That my opinion's not worthy. That's right. My opinion isn't worth it. Now watch this. Is this really about her boss? No. This is her wound. She's walking around wounded and then telling everybody her boss is wounding her without saying it. When really she walked in wounded. If Remember I said the example, if I rub your arm like this, no problem. But if you got a bunch of cuts or gashes in there, I can touch you with a cat hair and you're gonna jump out of your skin. It has nothing to do with her boss. It has to do with she doesn't think her voice matters, not just with her boss. Where else do you think your voice doesn't matter? Everywhere. Everywhere. Starting with what? Myself. Okay, where else? My family. Yes, that's where, did you hear that? That's where it comes from. And when you say your family, is it really your whole family or is it a member of your family? Is it your father? Started there. Say? It started there. He started it. No, it started there. It started there, which means he started it. Probably what I was saying. Let's see, she doesn't want to say that. How did he start it? By telling your opinion didn't matter. When did he tell your opinion didn't matter? How old were you when he told your opinion didn't matter? No, I think um, he never told me that. He just, when he walked. When he what? When he walked out. How old was you when he walked out? I think I was 10 the first time. Okay, and then he walked back? Wow, amazing. You forgot that part. And then he left again. And then he left again, but you remember that part. Did he come back again? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. (laughs) I'm confused. It confused me too. Whenever somebody's confused, it means they're about to learn some things, right? Whenever you're frustrated, you're about to have a breakthrough if you stay with it, right? So help me understand. He left and came back. He left and came back. Did he leave again? No. No. So he stayed? Yep. Okay, I I need a chair. I'm confused. (laughs) You made it sound like he left. He did. But he came back. He did. And then he left. He did. And then he came back. Yep. So he's back. He is. So he didn't leave. Okay. What's that? Okay. Well, no, I'm asking. If he's back, he didn't leave. He visited. Hmm, something to think about. That is something to think about. (laughs) Give her a hand for that. Nice job. So, looks like he stayed. Yeah. So why are we sad? Because I fear that... He'll leave again. Or others will. They will. They do. And some come back. Have some left and come back? No. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. Has anybody else left and come back? No, but I was... Are you sure? Scared he would. You haven't thought this through. Clearly. See, when we don't think things through, we go into automatic pilot. And then the habit of thinking controls us. And then our whole life has these emotions that aren't even based on truth. Who else appeared to leave but came back besides your father? 
Well, we all checked out for a while. Ah, you left? <laughs> you left? <laughs> Did you come back? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Because otherwise, I'd start crying. So, what color really has been driving because it's not blue? I thought You go green. to blue to justify things. What color have you really been living in? Purple. That's right. How many see it? Raise your hand. Patricia is living with fear in purple. So blue you go to for comfort and strength. Yep. Purple is where you've been living most of the time. Yep. And it's all based on a story. Yeah. So do you see how all these things come together now? Are you starting to see why we're doing what we're doing here? And the story of your life has been? Bullshit. That's true. But tell me what story you used to tell yourself. That I wasn't worthy. That's right. Why? The story of my life is when I was a little girl. Dad walked out. That's right. And? Made me feel like love was a lie. Love was a lie. Well, now that's an interesting belief system to develop. Have you developed the belief love is a lie? And how many times have you said that to yourself or others, that love is a lie? A few. How many few? A few more than I should. More than 10 dozen? More than 100 dozen times? Maybe. Probably. Somebody once said, if you tell a lie big enough, loud enough, and long enough, sooner or later, everyone believes you. Who said that was Hitler, by the way? Most of us are Hitler with our own selves. We tell ourselves something over and over and over again until we believe that, even if it hurts us, even if it's not true. Your father didn't leave, he's here. He ran and came back and ran and came back. In a few days, you'll learn something about men. There's something need. If they don't have it, they feel like they're gonna die. Freedom! 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 All they have to say is that word, and look what happens. <laughs> Patricia's father, like most men, needed freedom. Did you see the universal response, almost universal? Yeah, I'm sure my husband was dancing. You wish your husband would what? Was up there. You wish he was up there? I'm sure he was up there. He wants his freedom. Yes. Every man wants freedom and love, but most people of the feminine nature, not women, those of the feminine nature, because men do this too if they're feminine, they try to take control and away the freedom, thinking that'll make them more safe because then they won't leave, but it never works. That's why your father left twice. But he loves you and loves your mother and that's why he came back. But he had to survive, he needed to get out of there. Because how controlling was your mother? Zero to 10. A good nine. Yes, which means a 10 plus. Because <laughs> a woman is judging it, so a woman saying it's a nine is a 10 plus. A man would tell me a 12 based on the experience of your mother. So your father didn't leave you and he didn't even leave your mother. He ran for his sense of aliveness because he let your mother control him so much that he hated himself. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, that, no. that and his job, he was. What's that? Between that and his job. Between that and his job, he felt no freedom. I understand, so combination. So then he ran, but why did he come back? Ah, there we go. There's the little insight we've been hiding from. Why did he come back? Because he loves us. Oh, does us include your ass? Yes. Patricia can now understand and feel that her father loved her. So tell me, what's in there when we go home? Love and forgiveness. Forgiveness of who? My dad, myself, my husband. Yes. And what are you forgiving? Because I like forgiveness because it means you're forgiving. Are you for animal rights? Are you for joy? 
All right, for you, are you for democracy? Are you for giving? For love. That's nice. So sometimes in our lives, my friends, an event happens and our brain locks up. It locks to a meaning that isn't true. And then the meaning creates emotion. And then that emotion becomes our life and it filters everything. And it's just not true. We distorted, we deleted, we generalized. She deleted that he came back multiple times. She distorted it into he doesn't love me. She generalized it into her own life and anyone else in it. That's what the mind will do. You did nothing wrong. That's the mind undirected. That's the mind undirected by your soul, by your heart, by your faith, by those higher emotions of courage and love without conditions. Not love because you do what I want you to do. Love because you deserve to be loved even if you disagree with me. You deserve to be loved even if you need to do something for yourself. Because real love doesn't have conditions. Real love takes joy when someone is happy, whatever it takes, even if it means being apart from you for a period of time or even forever. Otherwise, it's not love. It's the selfish desire to get what you want, whether it makes someone else happy or not. Some of you are in relationships where you're committed to the ship and not the relations. You're committed to the institution and you forgot the person because you don't even meet the person anymore. You meet your story about the person because you've told it to yourself so many times so everything is seen through that filter. If you think someone is your dear, dear friend and they're loving and they're generous and they're a beautiful soul and one day they treat you like you'll be shocked and you'll be angry and if you can't resolve it and you have to leave to go deal with something, you'll generalize their behavior later on and you'll say they're probably having a bad, what? Day. How many of you had a day where you hope somebody generalized your behavior is just a bad day? <laughs> but if somebody, you think that they don't care or they're selfish or they're mean because you've generalized about the human being. Because by the way, you can find selfishness in anybody if you look for it, including yourself. Whatever you look for, you're gonna find. You get, can you find beauty? Can you find love? Can you find generosity in any human being, yes or no? Be careful what story you feed. Make sure you're feeding a story that makes you grow and makes you contribute and give. Make sure it's a story that really makes you love. Because how can you expect other people to love when you're not loving? That wasn't loving towards your father. She never started to think, what could he be going through that he'd actually leave our family? That's not an easy thing to do for anybody. Even if you hated your family, it's not an easy thing to do. Because of the structure of family and friends and life and love and finances and everything else, he must have had an unbelievable amount of pain inside. Instead of thinking about me, me, me. But the next time you're throwing a judgment on someone else, remind yourself why you're doing it. You're doing it because you're uncertain. You're doing it because you feel insignificant. You're doing it for you feel disconnected, but you're the one making yourself insignificant and uncertain and disconnected. Because all that would disappear if you entered their world and tried to understand or appreciate. Not understand intellectually, that's why I say appreciate what they're going through. Doesn't mean you have to agree with it. But if you appreciate it, there'll be compassion, and where there's compassion, there is love. Compassion means you care passionately. That's where it comes from. Not really, but I made it up. It sounded good, didn't it? It was really good. <laughs> That's how it should be. But with compassion, two things happen. You're not in pain. The only pain is when we get stuck in ourselves and we make up the story about me, 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 me. And you're not like that, Patricia. It's very obvious you're a love bug. All you want is love, but if you want love, you have to give it when it's not easy. And you have to manage the mind because the mind will always make up the worst scenario. So you'll have a fight or a flight. It's looking for the drama so it can mobilize itself. You gotta calm that little turkey down and say, look, it's not a saber tooth tiger. It's not life and death. And oh, by the way, I am now, this all happened when you were how old? 10. 10. You know, 
32 years later, I'm still going to be worried about this? What a waste of a life. But no more. And by the way, all this was about her boss. Fucker. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me now, what do you pull from this and how will it change your life? Is this just a conversation in the moment? Or have you gotten an insight that can change everything? I've gotten lots of insights. Tell me what you pull from this conversation, please. I, I've obviously loved conditionally, and I need to love By it. the way, who else has loved conditionally? All of us have, but do we have to continue to do it? And by the way, when you love conditionally, who always gets hurt? You do because we do because when you love conditionally, it feels like a trade I I love you as long as, and the person knows that at some level. And so they can't really love back because it isn't love. It's manipulation. I'll be nice to you if you give me this. I'll love you as long as you behave the way I want. As long as you speak the way I want you to speak. As long as you agree with me. As long as you follow my rules, the blue rules, that make me comfortable, then I'll love you. But that's not love. That's you just finding a way to meet your own needs for certainty and significance. There's nothing wrong with that. It just leaves you empty and creates lots of pain. How many see? So the only way out of pain is more spiritual growth. And as simplistic as that sounds or overgeneralized, spiritual growth just means seeing more of life than just yourself. Right? What is this increase in consciousness? I hate the term because it's so overused by people. A lot of people use it to, I'm so conscious. That's significance talking. But consciousness is caring. When you're egocentric, all you care about is yourself. And we're all egocentric if we get in enough fear, enough survival. And kids are all egocentric. People say kids are so loving. But they're loving when you give them what they want. Otherwise, they scream their ass off. But we love them because we're drugged. Drugged by natural gods. Oxytocin. It's our child. We love them no matter what. It's a beautiful thing. Otherwise, kids wouldn't survive. <laughs> We don't see it, thank God. But we need to grow. By the way, why, when you're a child, do you get love for no matter what you do, you get loved until oxytocin wears off, and then all of a sudden, the rest of your life, you gotta earn it. Because if life always just gave you what you want all the time, you'd never grow spiritually. It would all be me, 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 me. And yet, we've all been loved so deeply because we know it's there. But we're supposed to know it's there, not so we go get it, so we go get it out of ourselves and give it. And when you do that, you'll never be alone. You'll never worry about people leaving. And if they did, they're not leaving, they're going on the next part of their journey. And you're not empty because you're not dependent because what you're wanting from them is in you. The love you're wanting from someone else is you. If they smile, kiss you, make love to you, do something a certain way, you just give yourself permission to feel the love. But the love is in you. Who gets that? Say I. But the fastest way to have that love be alive is to give it, because in order to give it, you got to feel it. The only love that you can be certain of is the love you give. So the next level of consciousness, it's not just a game. It's not a ladder for achievement. It's freedom and love together. It's the freedom to let anyone be who they are including yourself. And it's the willingness to love whoever they are and yourself. And that's a form of nirvana. And this week, you'll see 2,500 souls from 45 countries plus who seem to be practicing this quite a bit of time where they care for a stranger, they love on someone they don't know, they're exhausted, they haven't eaten, they're cheering for some person that's still not getting it. That's love. Otherwise, you'd be sit down. I know some of you have thought that at times. But most of you didn't stay there. So we have a little microcosm here that you could take home. The beauty of this week is to see what's really possible and then decide that that's who I am. That's not what just who we are as this beautiful group of people have come together for a higher purpose. But it's who I am, and so I can take that home. And I can build that in my community. I can build that in my company. I can build that in my family. I can build that in anything. (laughs) 
So tell me. Tell me about your boss now. He's a driven man who wants good results and he wants us to make them with him. Yes, and why does he want to do all these things? Because he wants to make a better place to work. Yes, he wants to be better. He wants his customers to be better. He wants all of you to be better. He wants us to take it to the next level. He wants that. He's always going to want to take it to the next level as long as he's got an orange in him. Is that a bad thing? No. Actually, the world would fall apart without orange. The world would fall apart without green. The world would fall apart without blue. It's like I said earlier, which one's more important? The atom or the molecule? Which one? Which one? Which is more important? The cell or the organ? The organ or the being? The being or the community? The community or the country? The country or the world? Humanity or the ecosystem? The solar system or the universe? Which one's more important? The multiverse or the universe? If we take out any one, we take out the fabric of life and the whole thing falls apart. We need hierarchy. Without hierarchy, there would be no biology. We need unity. Without unity, we have no experience of life. It's not this or that. It's all the parts encompassed together to see how it all fits quite beautifully if we stop judging it and just find a way to appreciate its purpose. Tell me about your father. He's beautiful. Yes, he is. And what is he, what is he, yes, give her a hand for that. And who does he love? Me. What about me? He loves me, he, he loves, loves his you. family. Wow. He must because freedom Without freedom, men feel like they're dead. And most men, once they got free, would stay free. But the love was even more powerful to him. So perhaps you can free him from your previous judgments and the burdens you put upon him without even knowing it because he loves you. He has to feel your insecurities. And it would probably make him feel so much pain inside. He'd probably feel like he's failed you. And the truth is, he didn't fail you at all. He provided you an opportunity to grow and learn things you wouldn't have learned if he would have stayed. You would just be dependent. But the truth is, one of the reasons you get pissed at your boss is you're not quite so dependent. You have your own legs to stand on and you know it. You're just a little scared to stand on him for too long because you haven't standing on him very much. If your father died, you'd be standing on him more. So... Why make him have to die for him to see you whole? Probably nothing would make him happier. Probably nothing on earth would touch his heart or soul to see his little girl alive with joy and not living in fear. My bet is it's a huge burden in his heart. For any father it would be, I know it would be for me. I'm a father. Couldn't imagine my daughter living that way, thinking somehow I failed that because I would blame myself and I'm smart enough to know better and I still would do it. It's human nature. So I'm sure he's done that. So I think it's time for you to blame him effectively and your boss as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> what can you blame your father for? My strength. Yes. My passion. Yes. What else? My courage. Yes. My beauty. Yes. My love. Yes. Give a hand for that. That's awesome. And I want an, I want an honest answer to this question. Would you be as strong if he'd stayed the whole time? No way. No. Would you have developed the same level of compassion if he had stayed the whole time? Would you have found these deeper parts of yourself if he had behaved the way you wanted him to? Never. Never. 
Never. Never ever. No bloody way. No bloody way. So I think your dad deserves a... Uh, does he live nearby you? Yeah, he's got my daughter. He, uh, he's got your daughter right now? So mean. I know. It's fucking selfish. So, so mean. How could you leave your daughter with him? What if he leaves? Give her a hand. Patricia stood up blaming her boss. Tony quickly understood that she was also blaming her father. He led her to see and feel her father's love and his contribution to her strengths and all her wonderful qualities. 